We're going to uh, start part two of our E3 discussion covering the top five or the big five conferences that mm. were broadcast. Sure. And our next is Electronic Arts. Yep, it's in the game. This will uh, be our shortest. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Warning. There's, there's not a lot to talk about here because a lot of the stuff is... Um, for normies. Repeats and for normies, yeah. Um, but we do have an important topic to start out oh, with. Oh, yeah. Right away, we're going to start with uh, Bioware. Uh, and we're, I'm putting it that way because... There were no real announcements, really. It was it was reaffirming Dragon Age Inquisition and saying we are making a Mass Effect something. It wasn't just affirming; uh-huh. it was putting a fine bow on it, so to speak. Oh my goodness! Okay, so yeah, let's start right there <laughs> with the the live musical accompaniment to, oh, to the on ma- the electric cello. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, this is another thing that maybe has become clear over the tenure of hashtag Laser Taser. Um, that the doc has a musical background, we'll say. Um, I talk about these things occasionally. Yes. Pretend. Yes. Uh, what, what's the deal? Why do they do I mean, that? why do they do that? Okay, so th- that unfortunately is less of a music question and I think is really more of a presentation question. Sure. Uh, we had a short discussion before we started this recording where I compared that performance to the recent league championship series performance where the front guitarist of some band whose name i don't know but right. likes to dress himself up real weird uh did a performance at the opening of that final sure and it was just the sort of thing where it's like they believe that having some sort of on stage live accompaniment it, it creates hype and adds legitimacy legitimacy would be the main authenticity thing uh, and those sorts of things, and I guess the you know I just d- like do you does that affect you? Does it make it help you to buy into it? Because really, it doesn't tell me anything about the game. What it tells me is that you are increasing the amount of marketing glam, yeah, of which yeah. you are trying to seduce me with. My first thought was, oh, this lady got paid. <laughs> this this oh yeah, yeah I mean, like, I'm sure she's professional, right? I mean, I'm, right, I. I you know, no, the, no. The, 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 I, I thought she was great. Um, yeah, she did fine. Yeah. But, but I was also thinking alongside what you just said, what, who, what is this? Who is this for? Yeah. Like, this is clearly the thought of a guy with a clipboard. This is one of my favorite things is my favorite metaphors is the guy with the clipboard who represents the faceless authority of, of any, any creative medium really. That demands things be done in a certain way in order to appeal to X, you know. Um, anyway, so... We don't need to say anything more about that. Right. That was just weird. Yeah, just weird. We um, already talked about Dragon Age. We already talked about Dragon Age, so let's talk about... Okay, so I am... I, I fully admit I am way overpassionate about things that really don't need them. And the police are after me now. Yeah. Um, um, Why are the police outside? <laughs> one of these things I, I, I have very strong feelings about is Mass Effect. Um, there are a lot of people who are... Currently, we are in a time where it, it's seen as a knee-jerk, nerd rage thing, and that really it wasn't so bad. This is the thought process I have now found to be content. Okay. Um, bullshit. Yeah. I, I, I maintain that Mass Effect 3 was a massive like massive event in 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 the in the like annals of video games as narrative yes driven pieces it is something that i really think should never ever be forgotten it is it is like the it is like the poster child of what triple a game companies think of their audiences you know like it is i i i one of these days i will go on for an extended period of time talking about all the things that I think are problems about Mass Effect 3. But most of all, it the ending makes it, it's clear that they didn't care about the audience when they when they decided to do the ending. It's just clear. I, I, I but anyway, and so how would you relate that to what your feelings are about these trailers? I, I can't believe they're doing a, a, another like okay. It would be fine if this was Mass Effect, like, 
two thousand years after the fact, mm-hmm. or or even the hundred years after the fact, or even fifty years after the fact. But the fact that they got Jennifer Hale to do something makes me think. Because obviously, right now, there's no information. They just said we are making a Mass Effect. You will be able to explore planets and meet aliens. That's not news. That's, that's not news. That's that's shit that you did in every Mass Effect. You know. Like most importantly, I guess what they're saying is they they want to they want to go back to the Mass Effect One emphasis on exploration. Yes, Mass Effect One the the whole big push was that here's the galaxy, explore anything, and by anything, w- one out of five planets in that galaxy. Yeah, will a, be, a planet, be, a solar system. Yeah, it, like rectangle on the ma- on the planet. Totally. Yeah, which is fine. Honestly, totally fine. I have played through that whole game completionist several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've. I am on the record as being a minority vote in that I find driving the Mako to be very therapeutic. Sure. Um, I think he's insane. Um, but, you know, to each their own. I just, I just, you know, all, I have a friend who, who, when I sat down to discuss the Mass Effect 3 ending with, um, he, he has a general, you know, dislike for getting passionate about this sort of thing. He, he, he thinks that investing too much in this sort of thing is, you know, like, or I shouldn't say it like that, because really what he, he, he just is, is very particular about the things that are worth complaining about. And he doesn't agree that this is one of those. Mm-hmm. And one of the main things that he said was that the way, the reason why it is the way it is, is so they can have another game follow it, which obviously is true is, is it's the cynical, you know, like, 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 like realistic approach to how they would attempt to do something like that. And it's just disappointing that it's true. I, I, I can't believe that they're going to do it that way. Maybe I'm wrong. We still don't know anything about it. But the fact that Jennifer Hale... I don't know if you know about this, but Jennifer Hale tweeted a... a the Before before any of this, yes. like weeks before E3, weeks before. Jennifer Hale tweeted a picture that was part of an N7 logo. At the time, it wasn't uh, strictly clear what yeah. it was, but the colors made it kind of obvious. And, and, I'm, and in my brain... There was a, like, you know, a tiny, there was like a synapse that like must have just like, like just completely yeah. just burnt out. Cause I couldn't, at the time, you know, as you know, I'm in the middle of a project, yes. you know, that is related to this. And, and it's so like, I couldn't like, uh, I, I, I just, it, along with the musical accompaniment at that point, I was like, fuck you guys. Lighting. Yeah. You know, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> to the Sims. Um, uh, so my point my weird thing about the sims i i found it very sort of annoying that they brought out someone they br- they brought out a, a woman to introduce the sims mm-hmm. and with why i suspect was fake applause yeah and so the problem is, is that the sims i think for a long time i must say this for a long time back in 2006 i took a college writing course because mm-hmm. i was in college and i had to do that and the college writing course was about masculinity. And uh, I ended up doing a paper about gender and gaming. And, cool. uh, and I want to say 80% at the time. Now, 2006, we've had eight sure. years of gaming being a big-time thing since then. Right. Gaming has gotten bigger. Much bigger. Much bigger. But in 2006, uh, the, it was 80% of the, the published papers were about specifically uh, The Sims. Yes. And it was like, why are girls playing The Sims? And it was almost kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, sure. guys, we need to order up all these studies where girls play The Sims. Right. So we can figure out why girls are playing The Sims. Right. I just, you know, you're asking ridiculous questions. <laughs> I, I think there was there was one study that went out of its way to have, uh, to have young girls play other games Mm. and you know quickly promptly unsurprisingly discovered that um these children will will play what's put in front of them right yeah (laughs) right so so okay so i I, you know to move on to to actually talking about the sims that was announced right um it looks like the sims it looks like The Sims. If you like it those games, like, yeah. power to you. Yeah, totally. I've never played them. No. We're going to move on. In, in a world <laughs> in a world where there is Animal Crossing and Wildstar and that sort of thing, I, The Sims doesn't appeal to me because... <laughs> in a world where there is Monteregione in the original Assassin's Creed 2. Sure. And uh, um, Minecraft, you know? like. Oh, like, you're absolutely right. I do play Minecraft a right. lot. That's a difference between us. 
Um, oh yeah, no, I don't play Minecraft at all. But um, but yeah, in in a world with these games exist, you know, I, I didn't care about the Sims before, and now I definitely don't. Yeah. But I acknowledge that it is a gameplay experience yeah. that other people enjoy, and that's okay, and that's totally fine. Um, moving on. Speaking of uh, things that I uh, that I don't acknowledge as reasonable pastimes, no. uh, the UFC game. Um, That's just weird. I mean, we talked before about how the Pokedex is maybe not a big fan of military shooters and things that uh, purport to have realistic violence. I, as I mentioned before, I consider those action movie type sure, things. Sure. Uh, UFC actually really seriously attempts to have realistic violence, and it is unsettling. Yes. I do not like the sport. And I would not like the game. Right. Um, uh, I, I, okay, I'm going to add to that. I generally agree with what the doc is saying. I will say that as I, 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 have a, I have an interest in martial arts, but only as a casual person. I, I've never engaged in martial arts. I've, I've never, you know, I, everything I know from martial arts, it, it has to do with kung fu movies, uh, manga and anime, and Power Rangers. You know what I mean? It's mm. all rooted in that sort of thing. Yeah. So I have no interest in actual mixed martial arts because I, I, I don't know. It, it's it's I, 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 What I like about martial arts is the philosophy, the, the discipline sort of aspect, and not so much the part where you beat the crap out of people. And, and like the mixed martial arts is, is the most efficient way to beat the crap out of people. And so it loses all the things that I find endearing about mm. martial arts. So having said all that, we yeah. now have what is, who is possibly the most famous martial artist slash philosopher right. as a playable character yeah. who, who died before he could have been a part of a sport that he basically created. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's Bruce Lee, obviously. Uh, uh, huge, huge Bruce Lee fan. I, I, I love... Like, one of my earliest memories is watching Enter the Dragon with my father. Um, and it's one of the only types of movies that we can watch together is Bruce Lee films. Um, and I don't know how he would feel. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not sure if he would be down on mixed martial arts. But who knows? I don't... Maybe, I mean, yeah, it's hard like, to say. Like, uh, but, you know, I could be totally wrong. Speaking of things neither of us care about, the next portion yeah we could probably just rifle through these of and e not. of the ea was the sports games yeah um, hockey speak, madden yeah okay like i said golf. with the sims i acknowledge that there is a an audience who likes this stuff and yeah. and it's completely valid and fine to enjoy sports video games i find them dull yeah i mean i, I like ima i like imagining a world where the Buffalo Bills win the Super Bowl in my life. Sure. But um, but that's just not a real world. I don't want to indulge those kinds no, of fantasies. No. So Isn't it better to keep it a fantasy though? You're like right. wouldn't yeah. it, wouldn't it be better than than to have like a like, you know It seems like yeah, it seems almost kinda of weird to be like, Oh, I'm gonna take my favorite team and right. they're gonna win it. Isn't everything. that a weird like power trip sort yeah. of thing? Well, not that all video games aren't like a weird power right. trip sort of thing, but in any case Let's move on. Yeah. The next thing we have to talk about is a game called Dawn Gate. Um, did you, did you pay much attention to this? I'm trying to, this is such a generic this, name for a game. It's the MOBA. It's the, the console oh, MOBA. Oh, it's the yeah. MOBA. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that is so overblown. Yeah. Can we not talk about that? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a, a small, <laughs> a, a small portion of this to talk about this real quick. Um, for over ten years, me and a group of friends have been playing... Uh, Defense of the Ancients, which is now known as Dota 2. Um, I played for two years, then I quit. <laughs> um, there was a short period of time where I played League of Legends. I'm done with that now. For I, I played towards the beginning of its life when it was just it just wanted to be Dota again. Um, and now it's moved on to its own thing. I'm not going to get into the politics of Dota 2 versus League of Legends. P play what you like. Whatever. Um, MOBAs are the new hot thing they if are. you want to make money yes um everyone's trying to make a moba yes fucking dc made a moba yep. you know um uh, heroes of the storm yeah a uh, hero uh, yeah i love that because that fell off the the planet like yeah. like there was a there was a period where everyone's like whoa here are the storms and now no one cares like like if you were if you're on twitch like uh, below 100 viewers like constantly wait is that game real 
Is it Heroes exist? of the Storm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? There's an alpha build of Heroes of the Storm. Uh, alpha and, build. Yeah, and that whatever. people, that, that like six people on the planet I currently have access to or something like uh, that. Whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, fine. Out of, in, on the subject of Heroes of the Storm, fine. If you're, if you're into a really, 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 really casual, quick, you know. But Heroes of the Storm for me is weird because I remember when Blizzard Properties had stories. And, don't, and, and we, don't, we don't talk about that anymore. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, Dongate. Uh, I I just wrote down GLHFDD. Yeah. Uh, not Dota. Um, not Dota. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's is this the one that was based off of War Machines or whatever it's called? That tabletop game. I don't think so. I thought this was one that was just kind of made up from scratch. I think it is made up from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. So um, now we have Battlefield. Uh, advanced Soft warfare line. yeah okay uh so i guess it's a nice it's a nice idea it's a nice idea to get away from world war ii modern warfare future warfare you know 1942 2142 mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. and to try a different sort of dynamic it's very i think it's that is laudable um unfortunately what i've read and what and less what i saw but i i, I could imagine it is that unfortunately the underlying concepts of battlefield gameplay uh vehicles that spawn at your spawn uh you know tickets things like that those concepts which worked well for those ga- I, I played battlefield 2 for a bit with some of the guys we had a lot of fun mm-hmm. that those things do not work well for the sort of heist chase dynamic that they're trying to show off yeah um, cause what I read was that, you know, when you only have vehicles that show up, you, the vehicles end up becoming what they end up becoming in a lot of other casual matches, which is just a way to get back to the fight where the fighting is. Yeah. So you don't actually have any sort of neat chase sequence. Mm. You just have, uh, let me drive to the fight, shoot people, die. And you know, if it's battlefield gameplay, I mean, chances are the first person shooter mechanics are there. They're solid. They're okay. Mm-hmm. But in terms of uh, somehow transcending what they've done before, uh, it sounds like the beta is definitely a beta. Right. Um, one of the first things I thought of uh, when I saw this game was uh, I thought it looks like a boring Metro. Um, like if if you took Metro out into the open. Mm um and and took away its its neat ideas and its somber atmosphere and its scary environment that would be battlefield hardline kind of and you added like a multiplayer component yeah, to it yeah. and took away the pump gun yeah um the other another first person shooter i like is metro um uh i played the first one i did not play the second one um i would recommend it they're both beautiful games okay um uh do you think is that all you got to say about battlefield hardline yeah, I mean that's it. It's it's Battlefield always seems like a a, a dun, franchise that had dun. yeah had a lot of beautiful concepts and has only sort of executed them sometimes. Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, next, uh, we're still in the man shooter zone. Uh, we're talking about Far Cry Four. Okay, um, we're gonna get to Far Cry Four now. We're gonna steal all the other Ubisoft is gonna get shit on. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Far Cry Four, my Not reactions. That I don't deserve it. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> I played the original Far Cry. I thought it was serviceable. I thought what was most neat about it was the sort of open island sort of setup that there, were, there seemed to be different ways to move the places. Mm-hmm. The gameplay was serviceable. Wasn't the the? I apologize for interrupting you. Um, wasn't the sort of deal with Far Cry at the time was that it was a it was a uh, a machine breaker or is that, am i thinking of crisis uh crisis was definitely built as machine breaker i don't know if far cry was as much but okay. crisis definitely was yeah. okay uh i have yet to play two and three but i do own two and three both through steam sales they are definitely something i'm looking forward to in terms of moving through my steam backlog uh i've heard i've heard two has some questionable gameplay elements and the plot's not really there at all I heard three has some questionable plot elements, but is a very fun game. Okay. Uh, and it seems like four is heading in the same direction, where it touches on uh, very questionable elements to put in a game, such as endangered wildlife. Uh, you know, the di- uh, the dictators, states of sort of these sort of amalgam 
Asian African nations that you know get put somewhere. Okay, um, so um, never played Far Cry One. Never played Far Cry Two. I did play Far Cry Three. Um, you're completely right about the gameplay. The gameplay is there. It's it's fun. It's really, really, really well done first person gameplay. Um, I I could not stomach. Uh, the a lot of the plot stuff and the main reason is because it is kind of a dances with wolves right i heard it's Avatar, sort of a, yeah you know uh white man savior story and which you know i i i, I mean i you it's a first person so you never see the white guy you're playing as but because of the way the upgrade system works and the fact that you're that it, it's shown visually through tattoos you constantly look, and you can, can confirm that you are in fact a white guy, um, and you're and you're going to go. It this would be fine if the whole game was going to go save your stupid white friends, which which that is part of of, of okay. the plot is going to save your stupid white yeah. friends. But the other part of the plot is 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 uplifting these these oh. weird ethnic you know like like what a regrettable plot decision to make. Why well, would you make that? And then well, here's the thing: it just gets weirder and worse like it just you know and and then the ending is totally fucking out there but but you know just from a pure, pure gameplay perspective if we're taking it out all the stuff that i feel like is deeply squicky it is a really fun way to kill some dudes with a bow and arrow which is what i did i didn't use any guns mm. i just did bow and arrow almost the whole game as much as it would let me yeah um hunting the wildlife is fun i'm not big on open world games but this was close to an open world game yeah. it pretty much is an open world yeah. game um there's some hilarious ai antics <laughs> um so when far cry 4 opened up and we have yet another game yeah. with weird not weird i should stop using the descriptor weird with uncomfortable ethnic characters and a weird crazy guy which was the thing with the last game was the main okay. antagonist was a weird crazy guy yeah and yet again, we have another weird, crazy guy doing very much the same thing. Doing pretty much, and so I'm like, with for me, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll put this one in the back of my brain and never ever play it, you know, like like uh, unless you know I hear something from um, uh, SFX. Oh, Lord Thorn. Yeah, Lord Shank Thorn. Master. Sure. Shank Master. Thank you. That'll do. Um, unless I hear something from him, he's he's the one I normally hear in regards to first person shooters. Yeah. And that sort of thing. So we're gonna move on. There's not much more yeah. to say about Far Cry. I mean, I think that's very much yeah. I, I think that the it's a series that's had very competent gameplay, and it sounds like the gameplay has gotten better over time. Uh, they just kind of are making really just either lazy or bad plots for whatever reason. Right. Um, you know, I, I hope they learn. I don't know. They're French Canadians <laughs> again. With maybe the French maybe Canadians. they can learn. Uh, Dan Central. Um, what's next uh, I, I, yeah. I could not care I'm so, uh, you know uh, this not we're not in the market this is dance central is is not a gamers game really if yeah. you are if you do play games and you like dance central mm -hmm. nothing against you know you can enjoy whatever you I like I guess you could say it's an experience that I don't connect with yes yeah totally yes 100% um Tom Clancy again but this is division so we're gonna move on we talked about yeah. division uh there was a racing game and I did not catch the name so we're gonna move on um, oh, EA racing game? Yeah. I don't remember. I remember what the Ubisoft racing game was, but uh, I don't remember what EA had a racing game. All right, whatever. It wasn't important. Um, was it, oh, was it the... No, was it the Burnout one? The people that made Oh, you know burnout? what? You know what's happened here? We, yeah. have, we have just moved into... The the, EA, the EA one uh, only had one page, and now uh, we've just moved into the Ubisoft one. All right, well, That's what's e happened EA here. and Ubisoft, whatever. They're both short conferences. Yeah, they were, we've combined them. Yeah, I, I apologize say. for that. Whoopsies. Oh well, spoilers. Yeah, because because next is Butt Creed okay. or Assassin's Creed yeah. rather. So um, I think the Ubisoft game is called The Crew. Oh, The Crew. Yes, you're right. It is. Yeah. Uh, of all the racing games I saw, it was probably the one I would be most likely to play. Which is to say, still very unlikely. But I enjoyed the way it sort of focused on uh, you know being able to fall easily into games and out of games with friends. And also to have very to have a wide variety of different types of racing objectives, you know, rally rally races, street races, city races, whatever. Um, I think if I were to look for a racing experience, uh, I want it to be, you know, I want it to be sort of 
semi-realistic but still kind of arcadey. I often look to Outrun 2 mm. as one of my favorite racing experiences of all time. Uh, so, yeah, you know, that's what it looks like. And I, again, of the, or the racers I saw at E3, it would be the one I'd be most likely to play. Unfortunately, that still puts it pretty low. Yeah, yeah. I would pretty much agree with everything you just said there. Um, do we, I mean, there's not much else to say. This is the other Assassin's Creed presentation. Not the, yeah, we, not we much covered it. To say. Yeah. yeah. Um, shape up. Uh, not we fit is what I called it. Well, I mean, it's, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't rely on that. Uh, I've never actually seen someone play we fit. So, but I understand we fit involves a board. Yeah. Uh, we fit, you do not play. Uh, we fit is, is much more utility than, than a gaming okay. uh, device. Um, I, I do know someone who, who uses we fit. Uh, for its yoga mm -hmm. stuff, um, it, it's not Dalston. Um, yoga, yeah, Flame. yoga fire. Um, uh, I, I guess you're using that connects, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I I've got nothing else to say about it. Like you know, I I admire the attempt to create a device or a means by which you can make exercise entertaining. I admire sure, that. Yeah. Um, I I have no interest. Not not important to me. Yep. Uh, next is Valiant Hearts, which is the sad dog game. Yeah, that looks like it has the look of one of those really somber indie type games again, mm -hmm. and it's it's you know it's any game I think in which you're emphasizing uh, the human element of a real war that happened and accompany it with you know powerful powerful respectful art and mm -hmm. music. Uh, you know, I, I wish the best to him, and hopefully it's a good game worth playing and worth kind of uh, right. affecting people. Sure, but since we didn't see gameplay, it was hard not to much to say. Yeah, not much to know. Yeah, it was a good trailer. It was, it was you know, effective, I guess yeah, you should say. Yeah. But uh, not much to say. Right. Rainbow Six. So, Rainbow Six, um, I have never played one of those. My understanding is that nope. they're, they're very uh, intricate uh, team squad, uh, shooters, squad right? shooter games. Uh, again, the trailer that I watched, I would be curious if that, it was unclear to me if the trailer was, uh, if that was multiplayer between two sides or if that was, uh, one, or that was co-op multiplayer. Um, I, you can't, uh, yeah, again, going back to the division, if, if that game is going to be co-op multiplayer, um, I would be really excited about it. I'm less excited about playing that game as a multiplayer against other people. Yeah. Um, I've got nothing to say because we have yet again met a contemporary first person shoot, shooter. Yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. I, I, I could not be less interested. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, that's actually that's it for EA and Ubisoft. All right, as far EA as games and Ubisoft. Go. So uh, join us next time. We're going to talk about Sony.